they say the only constant in life is change. And this definitely seems to be true when it comes to applying for medicine. I think the 2023 to 24 application season is gonna see some big shifts that will undoubtedly affect you if you're hoping to get into medical school. In this video, I'm gonna go over my top seven medical school predictions for 2023 and what they'll mean for you as a candidate. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Ollie, a junior doctor based in the UK. And prediction number one is that we'll see an end to online interviews. As a result of the COVID pandemic, understandably, we saw lots of the in-person interviews shift to online interviews. So where you might have had an in-person MMI, you now had lots of different breakout rooms and potentially a video chat service such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, where you'd interact and sort of virtually do this MMI. Or if it was just a panel interview, you might just have a one-to-one -one chat over video conferencing software with one of your interviewers from the medical school. Now, as COVID rates continue to decline, I think we're gonna see a reverse shift back from this more virtual online interviewing process back to in-person interviews, in-person panel interviews, and in-person MMIs. Now, although things were pretty open this year, a number of different universities, including, you know, Brighton and Sussex, Leicester, Nottingham, they were all still using their virtual systems that they'd set up for the pandemic, despite the fact if they'd wanted to, they probably could have done in-person interviews. But I think as we move forward into the 23, 24 cycle, we're gonna see more of this shift back into only in-person interviews. Now, I'd say this is actually a positive for you if you're a well-prepared candidate. Having an in-person interview just means you can more easily see these sort of more non-verbal cues that are way harder to pick up across a computer screen, across the video conferencing software. The fact that you're in the same room as your interviewer means you're just almost subconsciously be able to pick up on these sort of non-verbal cues, body language, and let you respond better to their uh, questions, and so leave a better impression with them. Prediction number two is that medical schools can have higher standards for their applicants' work experience. Along the same lines as sort of virtual to in-person interviews, during the pandemic, understandably, work experience, it was almost impossible to get. If you're an applicant trying to go to medical school, there's no way you're gonna be able to volunteer in a care home if the care home staff are gonna have are having to live and sleep and work in that care home to avoid bringing COVID to the residents. You know, you're not gonna be able to get in. So medical schools drastically lowered the requirements for work experience. But now as things have opened back up, those standards are gonna creep back up. We saw an explosion in virtual work experience, you know, either by watching pre-recorded videos or some sort of live video link into sort of a GP practice or a hospital, students were able to still gain somewhat of the same experience of actual work experience, despite the fact they were stuck at home. But I think as now medical schools are gonna decide that, well, you actually did have the opportunities to go out to potentially care homes, volunteer in charity shops, have placements at, you know, in-person placements at GP hospitals, they're gonna look less favorably on this more sort of virtual and softer work experience placements. Now, I'm not saying standards will go above the pre-pandemic levels, but I think they will start to creep back up to where they were before COVID. So, you know, if possible, students should have got into a hospital for a week, should have got into a GP practice for a week, and should have done some sort of volunteering or charity work, something over a longer period of time, you know, potentially in a care home volunteering for six months to a year where possible. Prediction number three is that we're actually gonna see a reduction in the number of people applying to medical school. The last two years have seen record numbers of candidates apply for medicine. In 2021, that number was 28,690, which rose to 2022, which saw 29,710 people apply to medicine. These sky high figures were definitely influenced by the pandemic. You know. Doctors, nurses, healthcare workers in general were in the forefront of everyone's minds as people were clapping for carers literally every night. So I think that naturally put it in people's minds that they want to study medicine because it's well respected, you know, at the top end, well paid and an incredibly rewarding job doing meaningful work. You know, doctors were key workers that were continued to allow to go to work while other sort of more non-essential jobs had to stay at home. However, 2023 has seen that sky high figure slightly dip off. So in 2023, we only had 26,820 people apply to medical schools. Now, I say only 26,820, but 
that is still high levels, especially considering the last 10 years, you know, the graph still sort of looks like that. We're still at a peak, but it's slightly tailed off from the just insanely high numbers that we saw during the pandemic. With the very real potential for junior doctor strikes in the next couple of months, I think this will highlight the continued poor working conditions and relatively poor pay that junior doctors experience and so help potentially to just continue to slightly tail off and shave off those ridiculously high pandemic numbers into a bit more reasonable application numbers for the 2023-24 cycle. Now prediction number four is actually slightly counterintuitive considering everything that I've just said because prediction number four is that we're going to see increased competition for places at medical school. Despite the fact that I'm imagining the number of applicants might slightly tail off, it's the reality that the number of spots at universities across the UK to study medicine is going to be capped results in my prediction that competition rates are going to be higher. The number of spots to study medicine in the UK is normally set by the government and pre-pandemic that level was about 7,000. But during the COVID pandemic, this cap was lifted and that resulted in the number of spots available actually being able to swell to 10,500. So during the pandemic, we could take in 10,500 new medical students into university each year. But now that cap is being reintroduced, severely curtailing the number of spots available and so sending competition way up. With the cap being reintroduced this year, there'll be about 7,100 spots for home medicine applicants and 500 spots available for international applicants. Prediction number five is that we may see curriculum changes in response to the new apprenticeship program. If you haven't heard about it, from the summer of 2023, there's gonna be a new program launched to produce doctors in the UK, and that's an apprenticeship model sort of way of teaching. So instead of paying £9,000 tuition fees to medical schools for five years, students will be able to sort of become a doctor apprentice. So they will do some learning sort of through lectures, small group teaching, but they'll spend a lot of time on the wards with doctors shadowing them as their apprentice, pay far less in student fees and still come out as hopefully a fully functioning doctor at the end of five years. But having sort of worked throughout that time rather than being just a full-time student. Now, depending on the success of this program, I think it could kickstart a series of changes in the more traditional medical school curriculums. Because if this apprenticeship program is, you know, completely successful, we're gonna have to start looking more critically and analytically about why we've got so much sort of more preclinical, theoretical, scientific knowledge in our medical school curriculums when it clearly isn't really needed in reality if these apprentices can sort of ignore all of it and still come out as completely functioning doctors. Now, admittedly, there is gonna be a five year sort of delay from the start of the apprenticeship program till we start seeing their doctors coming into the mainstream and actually functioning in the NHS. So it's probably not gonna be quick, but it is a prediction for 23-24 that medical schools may sort of perk their ears up, take notice of what's happening and look internally as to whether there's anything they need to adapt and change to sort of almost respond to this. It could be considered a threat to their sort of traditional medical school model. Prediction number six is a bit of a controversial one and that's because I think we may see a planned increase in the number of spots available at medical school. Now, I know I've just told you about how there is a cap imposed by the government for the number of doctors we can train each year, but I think external pressures may result in that cap being increased. Currently, places are capped for a number of different reasons, but firstly, and potentially foremostly, it's money, plain and simple. To train a medical student in the UK costs, as an estimate, about £200,000, which makes the £9,000 student fees seem a bit piddly. So the treasury has to pay out 200K for each medical student and it doesn't get any return on its investment until at least five years have passed for that student to go from year one of medical school to fully qualified doctor. Secondly, there's a limited availability of placements for these students to go. You know, as a medical student, you have to be able to go and do placements in hospitals, in GPs and there's not an infinite number of hospitals or GP practices that can take an infinite number of students. And finally, that same sort of limit 
actually applies to educators, sort of people, doctors who are willing to take on and teach medical students, there's not an infinite number of them either. Now despite these three valid reasons for the government capping the number of spots available at medical school each year, I think we may see an increase because of the external pressures that the NHS for one is currently facing. I'm sure you've seen this all over the news at the moment that the NHS, it seems like it's almost on the brink of collapse. You know, we've got nursing strikes, ambulance strikes, the junior doctors thinking about striking, they're gonna ballot very soon. And the fact that we're just sort of, we could be producing more junior doctors to fill more unfilled posts, but we're choosing not to, it just seems really counterintuitive. A recent census showed that more than half of advertised consultant physician positions went unfilled. So that's essentially over half of sort of the boss doctor jobs are just empty. And 75% of these vacancies, they had no one apply to them, which just shows a real lack of sort of highly skilled, qualified, and the end result of doctors in the UK available to work in the NHS. Figures from the General Medical Council showed that in 2021, only 37% of doctors starting work in the NHS had a British qualification. Now, that's in no way a problem, you know, diversity is the strength of the NHS, and foreign doctors make up an incredible element of the workforce for the NHS, but the fact that we're only producing sort of 37% of homegrown doctors when it seems like we have the capacity to produce far more and there are these unfilled posts, why aren't we doing it? Why are we still capping it? And I think there may be more questions asked and sort of more fingers pointing at the fact that we have this cap in place where we could slightly increase it or a lot increase it. And as called for by the Medical Schools Council, who are sort of the heads of the medical schools, they want to increase it. And I think all these different pressures may result in in it increasing for 2023-24. Okay, and prediction number seven is that we're gonna see increased competition for the UCAT. But there is a very good reason for why I'm saying it. I'm not just saying it to scare you. And that is because the BMAT is being canceled. Now, if you want to find out why the BMAT's being canceled, what's gonna replace it, and what all this means for you as a candidate, then you need to watch this next video where I explain the answers to all those questions.